skies as a sweet little old lady. <laughs> extra help to see in the dark. <laughs> this story is called The Answer Box. It's a very sweet little story. In June 1963, Chris Keaton, a young lad in the, from the Northwood area of Kirby, went to stay with his Aunt Gladys on the Netherfield Road in Everton for a week. Aunt Gladys was a widow, and always made a great fuss of her young nephew as she had no children of her own. When he arrived, she told him to go and look in the wardrobe in her bedroom. There was something there for him. Now, excuse me, because this is annoying me, because it's too high. And I can't see you, that's better. Hmm. Chris rushed into the room and mooched about for a while. He returned empty-handed with a puzzled look on his face. Gladys shook her head in dismay and went to look in the wardrobe herself. She immediately saw that Chris had accidentally pulled down her prized mink coat, which lay in a heap at the bottom of the wardrobe. She never wore it. It had been given to her by an old relative, but she loved the feel of its luxurious silky fur. She picked it up and said sarcastically, It's under this old thing. The sarcasm was totally lost on the boy. All he could think about was the surprise which his aunt had in store for him. With a nod and a wink, Gladys then pointed to an old hat box at the bottom of the wardrobe. It's in there, she said. Go on, open it. With a broad smile, Chris picked up the hat box and opened it. Inside was a large black cowboy hat and a toy silver Colt 45 gun, plus a box of caps. Within minutes, Chris had the hat on and was twirling the gun in his hand like a western gunslinger. Gladys had to laugh, to struggle not to laugh at the serious expression on her nephew's face. With an innocence that she found endearing, Chris asked if she knew that Kirby was really called Dodge City and he was the Kirby Kid. <laughs> Chris then challenged his own shadow to a draw, which was followed by a volley of caps. The cat scuttled under the sofa and cowered there until it was sure the noisy young intruder had gone out. Chris was galloping his imaginary horse down Netherfield Road later that afternoon, still wearing his cowboy hat, when he saw someone that today's children would probably laugh at or ignore. But Chris's heart somersaulted. It was the ragman pushing his old wooden cart, a limp yellow balloon trailing behind, shouting, Rags! Any old rags? In a sing-song voice, which sent all the local children running excitedly into their houses and emerging shortly afterwards, clutching a handful of old clothes. Chris remembered what his aunt had said about the old fur coat in the wardrobe. This old thing, she had said. The boy turned and ran back home to fetch it. Maybe he could get a goldfish for his auntie in return. Aunt Gladys was at Mrs. Prendergast's house enjoying her daily gossip. Chris grabbed the mink coat and made a beeline for the ragman, who quickly took it off his hands, a little too quickly, in return. Chris was given a purple party horn. He blew into it and it unfurled a paper spiral that tapered to an orange feather. I want more than that, Chris demanded cheekily. Oh, there's me auntie's milk coat. Milk coat, milk coat. After, I haven't even had a drink yet. <laughs> After a lot of grumbling, the ragman searched his pockets, then rummaged through the rags on his cart and eventually produced a small green plastic box, which he handed to Chris. What is it? The child asked. It's an answer box. Ask it any question and it will truthfully tell you the answer. But it can only answer yes or no. Before Chris could ask any further questions, a voice echoing in the distance caught his attention. 
It was Auntie Gladys and she wasn't happy. Christopher, Christopher, come here at once. What have you done with my mink coat? Whenever an adult called him by his full name, he knew it meant trouble and it stopped him in his tracks. By the time he had turned back again, the ragman's cart had trundled off down the side street and away, leaving a street full of children, each clutching a balloon, a whistle, or some other cheap toy. Within seconds, Gladys had grabbed hold of Chris's collar and was marching him back home. That's it, said Gladys. You can stay in for the rest of the afternoon. I'm surprised at you, Christopher. I really am. However, Gladys could not stay angry with him for long, and after half an hour back at the house, they were chatting over a cup of tea. Chris decided that it would now be safe to show his aunt the box which the rag man had given him. Rather like Jack from the fairy tale, showing his mother the handful of beans he had exchanged for her prized cow, Chris showed Gladys the answer box and told her it could answer any question. I'll pull the other one, you little rascal, said Gladys, shaking her head. I should box your ears, never mind playing with a silly plastic box. Christopher, however, was unabashed. He was too busy examining the green box and particularly a little plunger button on the top. When he pressed it, the pointer swung between the words yes and no. Despite herself, Aunt Gladys was equally fascinated by the box, and she asked it, jokingly, Will I marry a film star? And then pressed the little button. A spring-loaded mechanism clicked, and the needle immediately swung to the word, No. Chris giggled, and he took hold of the box. Will Auntie, marry, will Auntie Gladys marry at all? He asked, then pressed the button. The box gave its unexpected answer, Yes. Gladys grinned. She'd lost her husband five years back and had never really bothered seeing any man since. She did have an admirer, though, a man who lived across the road called Alan, although he was quite a few years younger than she was. Gladys asked, Will the man I married be called Alan? The box said, No. Wonder who it'll be, Auntie, said Chris and he innocently quizzed the box with a series of further questions. Will it be father or hair? Oh, Chris, you little monkey, smiled Gladys as the pointer on the box turned to, no. Will it be the coal man? No. Gladys was pretending to treat the whole thing as a laugh, yet she was childishly fascinated. Chris kept questioning the box. Will it be the milkman? No. Will it be the club man? <laughs> Gladys half joked. Chris repeated the question. Will it be the club man? Yes, came the answer from the box. A big smile broke out on Chris's face. Gladys was stunned. Auntie, you're going to marry the club man, said Chris. And as an afterthought, he asked if she'd be having a big wedding cake. You've got to have a big wedding cake, everybody does. That week soon flew over and Chris was back in his curvy home. He excitedly showed his dad the answer box and told him about the dozens of answers it had already given. His dad laughed at first, but then he started to wonder as he gazed at the green box. He picked up the newspaper and turned to the racing section and asked each, named each horse running in the 6.30 at Kempton Park asking the box if it would win. When he reached a horse called Lovely Money, the box indicated yes. For every other runner, it had said no. Lester Piggott was riding on Lovely Money, which had odds of nine to two. Chris's dad couldn't resist giving the box a try. He put money on the horse and it won. Was this just a coincidence, he thought? The next horse, named Golden Plume, also selected by the green box. It won at odds of seven to one in the nine o'clock running at Kempton. And the next horse, apparently chosen by the box, also won. 
Chris saw a change in his father, which he didn't like. He wasn't content with his winnings, which were far more than he had ever won before. Instead, he wanted more and more. He talked about going through the pool's coupon next in an attempt to hit the jackpot. That night, when he was drunk, Chris's dad brought two friends around, Joey and Bobby, to show them the box. They laughed at his claims, but, he be but they became deadly serious when he suddenly said, you seen another woman, Bobby? The box said, yes. Bobby went crimson and said, of course I am, the missus. Chris's dad could see his friend's discomfort, but still continued. Is Bobby seeing another woman besides his wife? Yes, said the box. This was true. Bobby was also seeing his neighbor's wife. To distract Chris's father, and without really knowing where the question came from, Bobby quickly asked, will Joey live to reach the age of 50? The pointer quickly sprung to no. Will Bobby ever reach the age of 50? Chris's dad asked. Hey, shut up, will you? I don't want to know, said Bobby, becoming increasingly nervous. No, said the box. Bobby and Joe were both aged 49 at the time. Bobby suddenly erupted and knocked the answer box out of Chris's hand and it hit the floor. Something cracked inside it. Look what you've done, cried Chris. That's my special box that the right man gave me. He picked up the box and it rattled. When he pressed the button, the needle refused to move. A fight broke out between Bobby and Chris's dad, and during the altercation, Joey picked the box up and threw it onto the back of the open coal fire. The green plastic soon melted, and as a series of green globs dripped onto the burning coals, the inside of the box was revealed. Nothing more magical than a few small springs and corks. A week before their 50th birthdays, Bobby and Joey died in a car crash in Shrewsbury. Chris's aunt Gladys did end up going out with the club man and she married him two years later. Chris believes that the rag man, who was never seen again in the neighborhood, was actually the devil. Perhaps it was all pure coincidence or the result of Chris's faulty recollections of his childhood. However, to this day, Chris is adamant that the answer box which was given to him by the ragman was able to accurately predict future events as sinister as they may have been.